Issue number 16 of the Power Rangers comic by Boom Studios begins with Zordon and Lord Zed on the moon, following their victory over Zartus. Zordon regains consciousness and Lord Zed tells him that he's always hated the saying, may the power protect you, because it makes no sense. When Zed asks if Zordon still believes in that rubbish, Zordon says he still does. Even though the Imperial has destroyed loads of worlds and Zed did a lot of evil things, the power did not protect the innocent. Zordon begins to explain to Zed that the power isn't some energy field or supernatural guide. It's the people's actions and what they think and do when nobody's watching. That's what the power is. Anyway, it looks like Zed is ready to kill Zordon with his staff. Clearly then, knowing that Zartus was the mastermind behind Zofran becoming Zed, will not make Zed return to the good side. Zed doesn't kill Zordon though. Instead, Zed carries Zordon's suit to a portal. There, Alpha steps through to pick Zordon up. Before they depart, Zordon tells Zed that if there was a way to sacrifice himself to turn Zed back to the man he was, he would. Zed tells him he was never that man. I think for the comic that's just a bit of drama and suggests that Zofran always had a dark side. It's probably a reference to the TV series as well. In that timeline, Zordon does sacrifice himself in Power Rangers in space, and Zordon's energy wave turns Zed back into a human. On to the Sentry Force 4 now. Zelia tells them to surrender. So they do. And that's the end of that. That was rather convenient, short and sweet. A portal then opens and the Rangers see Alpha carry Zordon out from that portal. The suit's energy coils are ruptured and the coolant is leaking. Billy tells Zordon that a breach could happen at any moment. He apologises to Zordon that the suit didn't perform better. However, Zordon tells him it's the best he's felt in a millennia. For the Omega Rangers, they're disappointed that the Ultra Omega Zord broke after they finally brought the Zords together. I'm not arguing with that. It was rather disappointing seeing the Ultra Omega Zord only briefly just to be defeated by the Imperials. Dracon ends up communicating just with Trini. He wanted to give Trini the chance to say thank you to him. After all, Dracon left C's body with the transponder inside, allowing Safe Haven to find the Omega Rangers on that cursed planet. Dracon did it because he wants to be the one to defeat the Omega Rangers. Anyway, Trini allows Dracon to depart. She calls Dracon by his old name, Tommy, and says he doesn't have to go back to what he once was. And so the Spectrum 2 flies off through space. At the remains of the command center, there's little power coming from the power chamber, which appears to be the reason why the rangers still have their powers. This suggests the power chamber could be something different from the power chamber of the TV series. Anyway, Billy can't fix Zordon's suit. It's degrading Zordon's energy and breaking down his cellular structure. If Zordon stays in the suit, he will die. Grace offers to help by getting him into a proper containment chamber. She's got what she needs at an off-campus black site. Zordon thanks Grace for helping him after the way he treated her before. And before Zordon returns to a containment chamber, he wants to do what he's always wanted to do. And we see him stand on top of the white tiger dragon sword, presumably looking over Angel Grove, and he cries. For the Omega Rangers, they say goodbye to the Blue Emissary. The universe is in chaos, and the emissaries are incomplete. The Blue Emissary was resurrected after the Orange Imperial was destroyed. However, the other two weren't revived. Not even the Blue Emissary understands why, so he's going to seek out the Morphin Masters. I wonder if his quest will tie in with what's happening in Power Rangers universe. Trini doesn't want the Emissary to leave, but he tells the Rangers that the Omega Rangers don't need a mentor. They are basically the best Rangers in the universe, so with them protecting the innocent, the Emissary is free to depart on his journey. Back to Zordon now. He's in his new containment chamber and he's virtually back to normal. Zelia tells Zordon that the people who supported Zartus have fled Eltar and that it could take generations to undo the damage Eltar has done. Zordon tells Zelia that he won't return to Eltar with her as much as he would love that. He believes Eltar needs a fresh start and suggests that Zelia will be made a supreme guardian after all her efforts. Next, we see Jason and Tommy with Zed's minions. They're given a choice of two portals. One takes them to safe haven so they can start new lives. The other takes them back to the moon so they can rejoin Lord Zed. Zordon says they earned the right to choose. Before we see their choice, 
we see Zelia in her human form, Candace, as she approaches Skull after a long absence. Skull wonders where she's been all this time. So, Zelia reveals her true form to Skull. He realizes that she's the same race that tried to invade Earth, but is glad that Zelia found out what was happening and helped the Power Rangers. Zelia invites Skull to be with her on Eltar. However, Skull basically says that he needs to stay on Earth to take care of Bulk. The two of them kiss, as this may well be the last time the two of them see each other. Back on the moon, a portal opens and Zed's minions step through. So, they chose to return to Lord Zed after all. I'm a bit surprised that they chose to return in all honesty. On the other hand, it makes sense. They stuck together in the TV show after all. Now, the reason why the minions return to Lord Zed is because they claim that if they ran to safe haven, Rita would be ashamed of them. So their loyalty remains with her more than Zed. And finally, we learn that Finster had a mission. An item was placed in the command center's power chamber before the Imperial attack. Zed says the Rangers won't even know it's there until it's too late. And with that, Zed tells his minions to gather what's left of their belongings because they're leaving. They're going somewhere they can revel in victory, for tragedy could be waiting around every corner. Zed removes his helmet and leaves it behind, ending the story. This wrapped up the Altarian War nicely, as well as nicely ending what has been a story arc that dragged on for far too long. As I said in Mighty Morphin issue number 16, Boom Studios can do whatever it wants now. It's clearly not going to fit in with the TV show's continuity anymore, even though there may be some shared events. The device that Finster planted in the power chamber. Could that be the bomb that destroys the command center in the TV series? I'm sure many readers will be looking forward to what's coming next, but how will the readers respond to the next story arc? Will they be divided, just as they were for this big Altarian story?